digital first is the only means of survival at this point in time for a business. Hi, I'm Zach Morrison, CEO of Tenuity. Hi, I'm Susan Schiekhofer. I'm the Chief Digital Investment Officer of Group M. We're going to be discussing how prioritizing a digital first culture is important for driving growth. My belief is that if you can't be digital first as a business, that's going to be a recipe for disaster as we continue on in an economy and in a world that is transforming quickly. You know, there's stats that say that we've experienced 10 years of growth in the past three months. This is the means of survival for all businesses. So, you know, what really resonates with me in the words it said, if we're talking about a digital first culture, uh, culture, I think something synonymous with culture is training. Um, we certainly run lots of outside training. We do it with our platform partners. We do it with outside trainers. We train each other. You know, the platforms are masters at it. And we do take advantage of it. We're a media agency that buys every single media there is. And all of it, all of it is digital in some way, shape, or form. Like a television buyer is not a television buyer anymore. We find that we really need both teams to work with each other to educate each other and to teach each other. We'll have our TV buyers get trained on Google platforms, trade desk. They won't necessarily be implementing, but they understand the flow through. Something that we've been doing, obviously training our internal teams, but training clients as well. Speaking to our clients that are omni-channel retailers that maybe weren't born in the digital era, you know, it's not just talking to them about transforming their business and their advertising and those types of things. You know, not taking for granted that like just because this is the world we live in and the world that we believe in and bias towards this digital first culture, you know, it's training them on what these tools mean and how they might relate to what they're used to or where the way that they used to buy media. And until the people change, the business is not going to change. So we're talking a lot about how our clients can work with stakeholders across the organization to make sure they change as people and understand where consumers are going. And consumers, the first thing they do every day, all day, is all related to digital. So it's important to take what we've always done with the media, the cross media uh, that we plan and buy on behalf of our clients and use the best of the medium with the best of digital, which can be distribution, innovation, applying data, location, audiences, and so much more. In terms of prioritizing digital skill sets, there are definitely people who are subject matter, like they're the super users. We have a very simple POV format that is, you know, what happened? What does it mean? What should we do about it? So when the individual client teams have questions about, well, what does it mean for my CPG client? What does it mean for my entertainment client? There are people who are the subject matter experts that can help guide those discussions and any education that the teams need. You know, one of my favorite stories is uh, there's a very large furniture retailer client of ours. And I asked him what was the best campaign, marketing campaign they'd ever run, ever in the history of the company. And he said, oh, it was this TV commercial back in the you know, back in the 80s. And I said, well, why was it the best TV commercial you ever ran? And really, in so many words, was his answer is because he liked it the best. This literally stunned me. And I said, well, in the digital world, here, look at all of, in, all of these amazing metrics that can teach us and tell us why it was the best campaign ever. So instead of throwing a bunch of acronyms and things at him that, you know, come from my digital first brain, you know, it was an opportunity to teach him and show him, wow, look at all these amazing things that instead of it being about intuition, right, it can be about insights. Yeah, we spend a lot of time on insights um, in terms of what we produce for the clients as well, because there's so much, especially when you're running television, print. You know, digital activation, outdoor, the interplay between the media. So educating our clients in terms of what does it mean 
is it important to them at the moment or is this something we want to keep an eye on long term? Um, this is something we do, you know, in any given quarter, we have we probably have three different evaluations going on. And what happens when you double down on search versus cut back maybe on search? How does it affect volumes? How does it affect your media mix model? So we spend a lot of time in terms of analyzing the campaigns, but but making sense of it to our clients. What are the key drivers of contributing to the overall results? Our clients at Tenuity, we, we put them into two buckets. We have kind of the digital natives and the digital adopters. And I tell them, learn from the opposite side. You have a lot to learn from one another. I'm encouraging brands to look at disruptors and the mentality that the disruptors have had. And they need to take that disruption mindset and that reimagined mindset going forward because the playbook's not defined. The biggest pitfalls that you know we, we have when we're working with clients on getting them to think you know digitally first in terms of their culture is the past isn't necessarily the best indicator of the future. How can they test new channels? How can they test new ideas? And I think it's important to know just because you ran something two or three years ago, whether it was you know YouTube or uh, some other form of digital video, that doesn't mean that it's not going to work today. The consumer is completely different today than they were, to be frank, a couple months ago, let alone a couple years ago. So dealing with this constant, well, we tried that before and it didn't work. It's like, great. I wasn't around then. The next part that I would say is the biggest roadblock and how we work to overcome it, I always tell our clients, if your CMO's coming, the CFO better be there. Because if not, we're not going to make progress here in a digital first world if all of your metrics are based off of not a digital first world. If it doesn't match up with whatever goals were set for the year or however those models are built internally, it's not going to get the credit that it's going to deserve. Right. So bringing those folks together, bringing the marketing department and IT departments together, right? Bring these odd couples together because that will, that's what's going to remove the roadblocks as we move forward. The example I always give is the finance and data science team, they should be best friends. But meanwhile, they're not. I, first of all, I agree. Right. You know, there was so much concern at one point that clients were going to take. Um, a lot of the digital in-house, and some of them certainly have and are you know doing a great job at it. Um, but it's really hard talent to hire, you know, to hire you know in mass people who truly understand um, all of the platforms, you know, the best of optimization, you know, the best of the inventory management. It would be great to get the CFO um, even in some of these investment meetings because, you know, n- not all of our business, but a lot of our business, um, listen, they do global procurement pitches, right? They don't only pick based on pricing, but pricing is usually a big part of it. And as we look to move through, to, to move to a programmatic first world, um, it is important that the, whether it's procurement or the, or the, or the CFO um, understands that you know, it's it's this strange thing, right? Because it's supposed to be automation, programmatic, but it can be more expensive. And that's a conversation that I do think that the, the financial community within a particular client needs to understand as well, because it, it shouldn't be a barrier. So in 2021, we're encouraging our clients and also our employees to write a new story for themselves. Make those big changes that you have, haven't wanted to make. So use it as an opportunity. It's important for brands to start with a new story. 